In this video, I'm going to take a look at another Gen 5 SSD. And even though this is not the first Gen 5 drive to hit the market, it is the first one to promise speeds over 10,000 megabytes per second. And it is the first Gen 5 drive to launch in a four terabyte capacity. So let's check out how this T700 from Crucial actually performs, uh, how it compares to other Gen 5 and Gen 4 drives I've tested so far. And most importantly, let's see if you should get one of these or not. Let's begin. If we look at Crucial's website, we can see that the T700 comes in 1TB, 2TB and 4TB capacities and that you can buy it either with or without a heatsink. The 4TB option is particularly interesting as there are no other Gen 5 drives that offer that option. Uh, some have announced that the larger capacities will be available in the future, but not just yet. The version without a heatsink does come with a thin and simple heat spreader on one side, while the version with the heatsink looks surprisingly reasonable considering that some of the Gen 5 competitors out there are going for really oversized and even actively cooled solutions. But as usual, I will talk about thermals a bit later in this video. Now, just like the other Gen 5 SSDs on the market, the T700 is built around Fison's new E26 Gen 5 SSD controller, as well as Micron's latest 232 layer 3D TLC NAND supported by some DRAM cache. So all of the Gen 5 drives use the same hardware, but their specs do vary a little bit. Now, Crucial claims a slightly higher sequential speeds, while the Corsair, for example, claims slightly higher endurance numbers. However, it is very unlikely that you will reach any of those uh, total bytes written numbers before their five year long warranty expires. Unfortunately, uh, Crucial doesn't really share much else in terms of specs, so uh, let's jump to some actual numbers instead. And this time around, I'm going to start with sequential performance because uh, Crucial did claim that this drive should be faster than others. And if we look at the graph, it does outperform the other Gen 5 drives by about 2000 megabytes per second when it comes to read speeds and about 1500 megabytes per second when it comes to write speeds. So uh, we're definitely getting a step closer to the theoretical limit of the Gen 5 port, which is around 14,000 megabytes per second. But since sequential read and write numbers aren't really that relevant from a practical perspective, uh, let's move on to some real world traces, starting with the PC Mark 10 quick test, which is a great benchmark for anyone that wants to add an extra SSD to their system. Uh, it is pretty much a collection of different tests that replicate uh, all those little light things that we do with our PCs on a daily basis that are not that heavy on the SSD. So uh, those are the things like looking at photos, opening documents, documents and so on. And the T700 does well here. Uh, it outperforms even the fastest Gen 4 SSDs by quite a bit, but it only matches the MP700 and the Aorus 10,000 in this light workload. But you wouldn't want to buy these super fast and super expensive drives for these kind of tasks anyway. So uh, let's move on to a bit more challenging a full PC Mark 10 suite, which is a test that replicates a much more intense, uh, much more serious, and just a more consistent use of the drive. And I would say that this is a very useful benchmark for anyone uh, that is looking for a new main drive or anyone that needs uh, to run some applications that can be very heavy on the SSD, like editing videos, for example. And here the T700 ended up with basically the same score as the MP700 and the Aorus 10,000. That puts it ahead of Gen 4 SSDs by a good margin with about 30% over the fastest 990 Pro and about 50% over most high-end Gen 4 SSDs. But again, between the Gen 5 drives, there isn't much of a difference at all. But in the PC Mark consistency test, however, uh, things did get a bit more interesting. Uh, this is an extremely heavy test that stresses the drive uh, non-stop for a very long period of time. It is a bit of an unrealistic scenario for most consumers, but it is still interesting to see how an SSD behaves under such an extreme uh, multi-hour workload that just pushes the drive to its very limits. And here, the Crucial scored way higher than both the MP700 and the Aorus 10,000. So even with the same hardware, they're definitely doing something different to uh, make the T700 hold up way better under these extreme workloads. 
Although, if this is what you need to drive for, uh, do keep an eye on the Gen 4 990 Pro that is only a little bit slower, but generally a lot cheaper. Now, when it comes to gaming, the T700 isn't as impressive as in the previous test. Uh, if we take a look at the 3D Mark storage test, which is a combination of benchmarks that uh, include a lot of gaming related tasks, it does beat the Aorus 10,000, but it only matches the Gen 4 WD SN850X, while the Corsair MP700 managed to do a lot better here with the same hardware. And if we look at the gaming results that I personally think are the most important, like uh, loading times and installation and update times, it ended up scoring about 98% of the fastest Gen 4 drive I've tested so far, the SN850X, while the Corsair MP700 is a bit over 25% faster in these tests. Now, there are no games that will currently show you a real-world benefit of having a drive with this uh, extra speed, but just with the other Gen 5 SSDs, it does feel like there is a room for improvement and that they can be set up slightly better via firmware updates. Now, when it comes to thermals, the T700 shows that these Gen 5 SSDs really don't need extremely large coolers. Uh, with its mid-sized heatsink and a little bit of airflow, the T700 was under 67 degrees on its internal sensors in a stress test, which is well within limits. And the FLIR camera didn't show any issues on the outside either. That being said, you do need some form of cooling because without a heatsink, the drive can get really hot as you can see right here. But any decent heatsink with a bit of airflow passing by should be fine for a realistic use case. Now this can be your motherboard heatsink for example, or just a simple third-party heatsink that you can buy on Amazon if in your region the T700 with the heatsink costs a lot more than the one without a heatsink because even without a heatsink, this drive is already very expensive. Now, here in the Netherlands, for example, the 2TB T700 will cost you 400 euros, which is a lot, especially when you compare it to the Corsair MP700, which has the same components and a price tag of 270 euros and a decent Gen 4 drive is around 150 euros or even less. The 4TB model has a bit of an advantage of not having any Gen 5 competition on the market, but that one will cost you 660 euros without a heatsink or 690 euros with a heatsink. While for a decent Gen 4 drive, you will have to set aside 270 euros. And yes, the T700 will be a bit faster, but I don't think it's worth paying two and a half times more to get this drive. In the US, things look a tiny bit better. The 2TB model is priced similarly to other Gen 5 SSDs, in which case I would say that the T700 does make more sense for a very storage-heavy use cases. But keep in mind, all Gen 5 drives are still quite expensive, and you can just get a Gen 4 drive for at least $100 less. Now, the 4TB model looks a bit better than in the EU as well, but again, you really need to want to pay a lot more for that extra performance, which again, doesn't make much sense in my opinion. So I think the Crucial T700 is a good Gen 5 drive. It pushes the performance a little bit further in terms of sequential read and write speeds and in very heavy workloads. And it shows that thermals can be completely reasonable without some extreme cooling solutions like we've seen on some other drives. And seeing that we're just slowly getting into uh, Gen 5 SSDs in general, I would say that any drive that raises the bar a bit higher than the competition is a very good thing overall. But it still feels like an early adopter product because it is faster, but it still doesn't push the limits of the Gen 5 slot just yet. Uh, and when it comes to gaming in particular, I would guess it could use a firmware update or two to close that gap with the Corsair MP700. Uh, now, the price also makes it feel like an early adopter product. And right now, I think it's really hard to recommend any Gen 5 SSDs for anyone that doesn't have a very specific use case that really needs this sort of performance. But it is heading in the right direction, in my opinion. And just like with the first DDR5 memory kits that were extremely expensive, 
or the first Gen 4 drives that performed kind of crappy, uh, these Gen 5 SSDs will become better, uh, they will become cheaper and just more mainstream in the future. And since Crucio is owned by Micron, who makes the memory chips for all these Gen 5 SSDs, I do expect that they should be able to keep up and be very competitive in this segment, just like they are with the Gen 4 drives. Now, that's all I have for today, but before I go, let's check out the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their brand new Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, including the new 12 volt high power cable for the latest RTX graphics cards. And as a little bonus, you get a cozy 10 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching and for sticking to the end of this video. If you liked it, do consider clicking that subscribe button so you never miss my future uploads. Bye guys, and I will see you in the next one.